What's going on, everybody? So I have something a little bit different for you all today. I'm going to be going through the entire card pool of command cards in Spark of Rebellion. Now, I know you all are used to a lot of the deck techs, but I figured I'd try something a little bit different. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. And if you all want to see more, I will go through all the other card types. Um, I might do a combo video for heroism and villainy since there's so few, but all the other colors, I will go ahead and review them all since I've had the ability to play with every single card in the entire set. There's only 252 unique cards. So the fact that um, we've had, well, basically a month to play with these. And I actually had the luxury to play with the cards back in TwitchCon, which was a bunch of months ago. So I've been playing with these cards for a long, long time in paper and of course, even longer online. So I wanna give you all my thoughts on basically every single card. Some of them are gonna be less exciting. And some of them of course are the meta cards. There are some that are gonna get better through future sets. And of course, there are some that might drop off due to additional cards. And I wanna give all my thoughts here, starting us off with the leaders. So again, if you all wanna see more, subscribe. And if you all wanna see more of this type of video, let me know in the comment section down below. Starting us off though, we got Emperor Palpatine. Um, and I'm just gonna go through from the Star Wars Unlimited actual website. I'm just gonna talk about the cards individually. Emperor Palpatine is, one of those leaders that uh, I feel like is poorly placed in the meta. Very strong ability, the ability to kind of ping units and draw cards with the action. And then the flip side is arguably one of the most powerful kind of things to do in the game where you play a 410 that just takes control of a damaged unit. There's oftentimes gonna be a damaged unit and you could force it with your action. Very strong, it's too expensive and there's too many aggro decks or tempo decks. Moff Tarkin, one of my more favorite leaders, uh, as he kind of just synergizes with so many different cards in the set. It's probably due to the fact that the set's called Spark of Rebellion and there's a ton of Imperial units. As we get more cards, I think this is one of those uh, leaders that is going to not get as much in the future sets. And he's not even necessarily meta, but he is a very powerful kind of plane leader that does a lot of different things for your units gives you a lot of value uh, in, in the course of a game. Hera, this is arguably the quintessential example of a card or a leader in this case that would very much like a deeper card pool as one of the biggest things that this game kind of relies on are the aspects, the aspect penalty, and the fact that you're kind of forced into playing certain colors in this case, two and a half with the heroism and villainy. And then, you know, you have green, red, whatever it is, this skips that, but the problem is, is that it doesn't skip it to give you a big payoff. And the fact that because the specter tag is a tag, you could have additional Ezra cards like um, Jedi Ezra or, you know, Padawan Sabine, you know, from, from the uh, Ahsoka series. You could even have Fulcrum, Ahsoka Fulcrum. She could potentially acquire the specter tag, depending on how they, they uh, allocate that tag. You could add Captain Rex, all these different cards that just allow you to play all of them, no matter what. And they could potentially synergize more with each other because one of the big things about the Spectres right now is that it's kind of based on a mill strategy, um, which doesn't really function very well because, well, the games are way too slow for that. And so I'd much rather see a much more synergistic kind of uh, mid-range deck from the Spectre cards. And that's only gonna happen through future sets. And then lastly, we have Leia. And this is definitely my pick for the strongest unit in the green category, the command category. She definitely got the best of the actions out of all of them here. Action cheating, the ability to leverage initiative in this game is extremely important. And the fact that all the good green and red cards tend to be rebels, in fact, basically all of them are, because this set of Spark of Rebellion means that this action is extremely relevant. This is another card like Tarkin that is going to get worse, or at least not as oppressive with all the options as we get additional sets, at least from what my initial take is. Next up, we have the bases. Uh, I'm gonna talk about these a little bit more and then we'll talk a little bit less about each individual card. The leaders are a little bit more important. We have the Energy Conversion Lab here. This is by far, or at least in my opinion, the strongest base bar 
none, right? When you compare it to Security Complex, Jetta City, and Tarkin Town, I would oftentimes rate Energy Conversion Lab as like, if you were to put on a tier list, this is like S tier. Then you have A tier, which is nothing. And then you talk about B tier, which is going to be like Security Complex and Tarkin Town. And then I would put Jetta City in like C tier um, in terms of comparing them all together. Of course, the 30 health bases, those are dependent on whether or not you can actually leverage the epic action from the, the bases that have epic actions. But the 5 HP is actually relevant in other conversations. But when it comes to ECL, there's not really a situation where I would ever consider using a 30 HP base over ECL. And the reason for this is the ability to give something haste at any point from turns one through five completely annihilates certain strategies, okay? You can ECL out the most popular one, Steadfast Battalion, immediately attacking for a 7-7, knocking out your opponent's leaders. You can ECL something like a Star Viper, giving you some extra restoration and killing out an opponent's space unit. Really uh, obnoxious for the aggro matchup if you are a little bit more controlling or a little bit more mid-range. If you are playing a tempo deck, guess what? If they try to do something like Metal Ceremony or Wing Leader or whatever, and they're trying to set up these few cards, ECL completely disrupts that strategy. There are just so many different things that have synergy pieces that when you knock out one of those synergy pieces, it's just absurd. Not to mention, you control how you trade. And that's also very important. If you have a 3-3, let's say Battlefield Marine, and you wanted to ECL Battlefield Marine because they played, I don't know, a seasoned Shore Trooper, suddenly you have a 3-1 and they have nothing. Okay, Not to say that's the best use of it, but this is the kind of option you have with ECL. It is a very strong base. Uh, compared to the 30 HP bases, it's not really a conversation. The tricky part about ECL is that and this is arguably why so many decks are running green. You don't really want to run double green. Like double green Leia is pretty poor. Uh, the only option I found that is pretty solid is double green Tarkin and double green Palp. I prefer Tarkin, as you saw from my deck tech a couple days ago. And that is actually decent. Other than that, this is the reason why everyone's running green as their secondary color. Or the vast majority of meta decks are running green. Sabine green, Boba green, Aiden green. This is the reason. ECL is like half that. The other half is the fact that Command is arguably the strongest card pool, and that's when we got to start talking about at least the green villainies up first. So as I said, we're going to go through these a little bit quicker, but we have start we have uh, Admiral Piet starting us off. Uh, two cost, one four, gives all non-leader units that cost six or more ambush. This is more of, I would say, a later game play than an earlier game play. If you can get the effect of Piet's ability, guess what? You've just built your own ECL except ECL only works with six or less. Six or more allows you to do things like Reinforcement Walker, 97th Legion, and it's kind of absurd, but it's a little bit hit or miss, and it is a 1-4, which is not that great of a body. I would much prefer, you know, um, a 2-3 or a 3-2 almost every single time. Even a 3-1 um, tends to be a little bit more preferable than a 1-4. General Tog is actually extremely powerful, the issue with it is that it's a 2-2, two -two. Um, and this is another card that you really don't want to play on turn one. It's more like a, in my opinion, four drop, where you go turn one trooper, turn two trooper, turn three trooper plus tag, and then you get the experience tokens. If you at least get two experience tokens out of this card, I would consider it a very strong one, but there's not like an absurd amount of troopers. Um, as you could see, even in the earlier stages, like if you just look at the villainy cards, we have Season Shore Trooper, and that's it. That's it, okay? There's some other options later on um, in, in the later kind of categories of, uh, of non-villainy cards, but that just shows you how many options you have. If you get more Troopers, this card becomes a lot stronger. Season Shore Trooper, this one's a very simple one. Two, three for two, very, very solid body early on. Nice early play. And then when you get six or more resource, which happens very easily in command because it's the ramp color, you get to have a 4-3. Very, very solid. Emperor's Royal Guard. This is a good, good unit on its own because there's a lot of official units in Command Villainy. But if you have Emperor Palpatine, it suddenly becomes a great card. A 3-5 is a lot better than a 3-4 because there are things like Echo Base Defender, which now trades down into Emperor's Royal Guard. But a 3-4 with Sentinel, very, very playable, very, very solid, um, and just a, a, an overall good card. Super Laser Technician. This is... Probably the reason why Villainy Green seems to be the strongest option, or at least 
one of three reasons why villainy green seems to be so strong um yes there are some green cards like without heroism and villainy that are good but if you start to look at um the reasons and the the concentration of cards that people are playing in villainy green super laser is almost always a three of and the reason for that is it trades into every single three two that's out there which there are quite a few right you have like the fall insurgent you have viper probe droid and then it gives you a resource and you can oftentimes leverage that which is really really powerful grand moth tarkin here um, this is a card that I haven't really seen too much play, and that's mainly because a 2-3 for 4 is honestly just too weak. It's too slow, but there are some situations where I have seen it, and that is in situations where it's against more controlling decks or where you can just get the value from the extra two cards. Rook, one of the most prominent ECL targets, right? Uh, or at least ECL options where you ECL Rook, you kill something, and guess what? You're left with a 3-6 that has Death Touch against non-leader units, which is really, really powerful. Other than that, I mean, it's a 3-6 with Shield and has Death Touch, right? Like, it's just strong. <laughs> Next, so we have Gladiator Star Destroyer. This one um, is solid. The Sentinel on turn is good in certain matchups. Otherwise, it's just a six mana five six, which can be subpar. It really depends on kind of where you're situating yourself um, in the matchup. Next up, we have the second reason for UW and Villainy Green, and arguably the strongest card in the entire game at the current moment, and that is Darth Vader. There is an argument for this, there's an argument for a couple other ones, but Darth Vader ambush gets to search for an imperial um, or a villainy card i should say that costs three or less or guess what any number of them but oftentimes you're gonna get a three drop that tends to be what, it, what the case is get like a cell block guard so suddenly you're putting a five seven and a three three in play sentinel and you're ambushing something just an absurd play for seven mana eight drop here we have a blizzard assault at at i have not seen this card be too particularly good the problem is, is it's an eight drop with nine nine that doesn't do anything immediately. And when you start to compare it to the other eight drop in Reinforcement Walker, which does something immediately, you start to find out why you play a Reinforcement Walker over something like Assault at, -AT. And the main reason is things like Boba, which can bounce things and doesn't give you any value if you're just playing this. But if you can get the value out of it, you can potentially kill something and kill something else, which is really strong. Nine drop in Relentless. This is just a very good card against any of the controlling matchups or a little bit more um, mid-rangey matchups where you can get the nine drop out and have it live. And then you just brick all of your opponent's events unless they're playing two in a turn, which if they are, then you kind of made them discard a card and you still have your Relentless out. And unless it's killing it with that second spell, you know, you still have your Relentless out. And we have our 10 drop in the villainy category in Devastator. This is a very powerful card. Sentinel Overwhelm 10-10. Sentinel is very important for this card. When you're playing a 10 drop, you want it to impact the board immediately. And the two ways you do that are Ambush or Sentinel. And the fact this has Sentinel is really good or a when played ability. And guess what? It has Sentinel and a when played, giving you the ability to just nug a creature immediately. This is one of the payoffs for ramping in green um, alongside Darth Vader and some of the later green cards here. Then we have uh, the two events in Villainy Green. We have Emperor's Legion and Overwhelming Barrage. Emperor's Legion, I've not really found this card to be particularly strong. Uh, it's it's just something that, uh, well, is good, I guess, against like Super Laser Orb Orbital or anything like that, Super Laser Blast. Like you're, you're maybe drawing like two, three cards, but oftentimes this is a draw one and you're drawing defeated cards. So you have to have set up for it. Just not a huge fan, but... And this is the third reason to be in Villainy Green, Overwhelming Barrage. This is a one-sided board wipe, oftentimes, and is really just crazy when you look at it. Um, you get to attack with the unit with plus two, plus two afterwards as well, which a lot of people kind of don't factor in. But let's say, and this is the reason why Boba Green's so good, you know, you go ahead and you deploy Boba, you Overwhelming Barrage on Boba, uh, you kill a couple of units, blah, blah, blah. Or maybe you even don't deploy yo, uh, Boba and you have the smaller Boba, you hit for five, you ready a resource, you deploy Boba, uh, you kill something, you, you ready two more resources, you're playing another three mana spell, maybe that's a Waylay, something like that. I have no idea. 
it just swings the battle absurd absurd amounts and every deck even if you're controlling you're playing a lot of creatures or units so this always has an effect um this is an absurd absurd card that's gonna be villainy green let's move on to heroism green our first card up we have is alliance dispatcher now this one's interesting but i think only interesting for one specific deck and that is luke and the reason for that is the ability to play a one drop and then follow that up with a shield token is really really powerful um and this is also why i think when we're talking about bail organa i think that's actually quite solid uh but alliance dispatcher allowing you to play a basically a ramp spell on turn one which is one of the few other ways you can do it outside of villainy green but it only really works if you're able to protect it or get more value out of your one drop most of the other green heroism leaders in fact all of them don't have any other option for you to kind of get some value and heck even if you're playing like chariot or uh, sabine or cassian like you're just not really getting much value out of that extra mana on turn one bail I've liked this card in Luke specifically. If you're playing Luke Green in more of a mid rangey control matchup, you can actually put a shield counter on turn one onto the Bale. And again, if they have to attack into it twice, then you could actually start potentially trading, right? It's a one, two, and that's one of the biggest downsides with these cards like Alliance Dispatcher and Bale is that they just die. <laughs> but this with a shield token with luke actually does something is actually able to give you some extra actions out of it and can give you a lot of value in the long run next up we have battlefield marine and this may sound awkward but this in my opinion is the strongest heroism green card in the game uh with it being somewhat of a conversation between this and one that we'll talk about later on but in my opinion, I would take Battle of Marine. And this is the reason why the green-based aggro decks are so powerful is because this has the best two-drop body in the whole game, right? If you're looking at some of the other ones we talked about, Season Shore Trooper, we're talking about, you know, Tog, Piet, um, Mon Mothma even, or as we get into the other colors, this just trades up almost every single time when you're considering two threes. And if it's a three, two, well, guess what? It just trades into it. And that's just super powerful. Doesn't have any ability, but doesn't need an ability because it's just a 3-3. And this is one of the reasons, as I mentioned, why you get so much damage out early on is because someone has a Battlefield Marine, you play a Season Shore Trooper, or basically anything but like, if you play like a, a Viper Probe Droid or something, it's just not trading into it unless you do play those cards. And even if you are, you're trading into a Battlefield Marine, which trades with it, and they've already gotten in damage on your base and that's three points of damage, which is huge, very strong. Next up, we have Mon Mothma. I'm not a huge fan of this card. I know a lot more people are, but the way I see it is you're playing a two resource one three, which is really not good. And you oftentimes cannot leverage the rebel cards that you're getting, right? If you're playing an aggro deck, Mon Mothma, not a card I would suggest running in the main deck because you're just looking to curve out with very high powered units and if you compare mod mothma to something like a battlefield marine sabine or wolf or a wing or x wing i'd much rather take any of those because the one point of additional damage or potentially two is huge and i don't really care about the extra cards in my hand because if you're playing aggro and most of you already know this by the end of the game you still have many cards in your hand you wish to deploy it's just that they've outscaled you or you're dead <laughs> so not a huge fan of Mon Mothma Admiral Akbar is one that I actually am a fan of a little bit more um, this one can work really well in both mid-range and aggressive or even more controlling decks but the controlling decks well you're not going to have as many units to actually defeat something but in the aggro decks siding it in or in the mid-range decks just playing it and dealing you know two three damage to something while also getting a one four body and having it have restore one is actually super useful again if this does two or three damage when it deploys it can be really really powerful and give you a nice swing especially since it since it is a one four let's say they play i don't know uh a, a three two or a three three and you play akbar you deal two damage to it now suddenly admiral akbar is trading up into that three three which can be really nice echo base defender another really powerful one a four three is a offensive sentinel and this is one of the premier cards in the aggro mirror 
but also is just good in mid-ranging decks because again it's just got high power it trades into basically everything and really defends you quite well very simple card but very very strong our first four drop is going to be bright hope this is an unassuming card but a very powerful one if you were just to remove the when played ability this would still be one of the best space units in green because of the 2-6 sentinel body there's not a lot of sentinels in space and even fewer so there are not a lot of sentinels in space that can go through multiple combats and live and bright hope can do that trades very well into the shielded units from boba trades very well into you know any um uh, two three it trades very well into uh if you have three twos out there like imperial interceptor it trades well into that it's just a very good card and then the when played actually comes up with things like akbar or even just returning like <clears throat> some random unit that took a couple points of damage really good wedge is our first five drop he is really really powerful if you're able to leverage the ambush ability otherwise he's just a five resource five five which is fine that's playable but if you're able to leverage for example the home one and ambush in a home one or ambush in any manner of vehicle the bright hope ambushing with a bright hope can be really strong that is really powerful remember plus one plus one applies to space units basically every time and then the occasional ground units i think a lot of people think vehicles and they think ground units basically every time but uh, i think every space unit is a vehicle um correct me if i'm wrong in the comment section down below but i'm trying to think of one that i i, I know off the top of my head and i can't really next up we have rogue squadron skirmisher this one's a really strong one um again anything that has ambush is really really powerful honestly i don't even care about the when played getting a two drop back who really cares um it can be relevant sometimes but it's really all about the ambush the four six body coming in smacking something and then just leaving you know maybe like a four three behind or a four two behind that is what's so powerful about rogue squadron skirmisher next up we have home one and home one this is a car that um I, uh, I I was a little bit higher on, but I've, I've gone a little bit lower on as I've played the game more. Eight drops in green heroism just don't really get played all that often unless you're a more mid-rangey deck. And if you are, you're just not that powerful. But this one does have a nice when played ability, giving you a three drop or less for free um, from your discard pile, which is really, really nice. And then, of course, if you are able to get it down and then start attacking, it starts to swing the game very quickly. So it's not bad by any means it's just a little too expensive oftentimes and unlike you know villainy green where you're ramping um you know with super laser tech basically every time and you have like the one-sided board wipes heroism doesn't get that next up we have the events for heroism we have two here we have rebel assault and we have ewing reinforcement so rebel assault is one of the most swingy plays in the whole game and one of the reasons why leia is one of the most terrifying decks to go against you deploy Leia, you Rebel Assault, suddenly you're attacking with three different units, and two of them have plus one, plus one, right? This can literally do, let's say you have a Dodana on the battlefield, you have Leia, right? Leia is now five power, Dodana's four power, and let's say, I don't know, you just have a plain old Fleet Lieutenant. Guess what? Fleet Lieutenant's a four, four, Leia's five, that's nine points of damage, Dodana's 13, plus two from Rebel Assault, that is 15 points of damage. And mind you, this is not a rare occurrence. It happens quite frequently when you're playing things like Leia. It is a very powerful trick, and almost every unit is Rebel. That is one thing that uh, is going to change as we get future sets. Ewing Reinforcement. This is one of those cards where I think it's just going to get better and better as we get more and more cards in the pool. But this is one of the best spells. And again, as I mentioned earlier, Battlefield Marine is one of my higher picks for strongest heroism card ewing reinforcement is the other this is a very swingy card it can allow you especially in the aggro decks just change the whole shape of the game if you're in a mid-range deck you can get a seven drop the choice of seven drop or maybe just put a bunch of things on the battlefield something like a fleet lieutenant and a dodana comes out boom suddenly you're attacking with the unit and you have the dodana buff <clears throat> which is absurd or maybe you're just getting some extra value and redeploying everything that got killed very powerful card and that is one of if not the strongest alongside battlefield marine in the heroism category let's talk about the double command cards 
uh, next up. So we have three double command cards. The first one is General Krell. This one is kind of awkward because it's a five drop that has four toughness. I really dislike that. And his unique ability doesn't really do too much. Again, drawing additional cards in this game, there's not really a ton of ways to leverage them at the current moment, unless you're playing like Han or Boba specifically. So if you're playing outside of those categories, um, and in this case, you'd be playing double green, so you can't play Han or Boba, um, you're just not gonna take a lot of value out of General Krell. Similar to Attack Pattern Delta, the only decks that could play this are double green. I mean, you could pay five for it, but suddenly you're playing five for this card, and this card gets so much weaker when you're paying five mana because you oftentimes want to do something like Attack Pattern Delta, follow it up with another unit, like something like um, if I play double green Leia, which is something I tried, you Attack Pattern Delta, Fleet Lieutenant, and that could be a very swingy play. The problem is that you get too few cards, and that's oftentimes the problem with these double pip cards in this game is that they cost too much, um, for their effect to be worth it and because the card pool is so low the cards aren't actually that strong now general krell and attack punter delta i don't think are going to get too much better as we get deeper into the game attack punter delta i prefer a little bit more than general krell but one card that i do think will get way better as we get a more expansive card pool is command and this is a card and this is the reason in my opinion to even attempt to play double green because it gives you your ninth copy of a ramp spell, which is really good, while also acting as a removal spell, a buffing, or potentially another, you know, draw or, uh, you know, a Balaged recovery or regrowth if anyone plays magic, giving you something from your discard pile to your hand. The ability to be a removal spell and a ramp spell, though, is the strongest part about this card, right? double green um tarkin for example giving you nine ramp spells and let's say you play a super laser technician on turn two your opponent almost never wants to trade into a super laser technician or they don't even want to kill it okay because that allows you to immediately take advantage of that resource however if you go turn two super laser tech turn three you go hit your unit for two with super laser tech ramp attack with your super laser tech ramp again suddenly super laser tech and command combined have traded with a unit and ramped you twice very strong and that's on the lower end command can also just kill something straight up although it is non-unique and that is something that you do have to remember because it doesn't hit everything other than that this is the reason to play double green i don't think attack pattern delta and general krell are specifically good and i don't also think that they're going to get much better especially since general krell has some very awkward tags for the right uh for the game right now and I don't believe the next set's going to give you much more in terms of Jedi or Republic value. We're going to have to wait until um, the Republic set that comes after the next one. With that said, let's talk about the just command cards, which we have the most of. First one up, we have the Vanguard Infantry. And this one, I'm not a huge fan of. Again, the 1-2 body is an extremely, extremely poor option. If it was a 2-2, I would have much more uh, like this card. Even 2-2s two are kind of on the fringe side of things. But the thing is, if you're playing this on turn one, right? And unless you have specifically another one drop, your opponent can just kill it if they have the initiative. So it's just terrible on the draw. I say on the draw, but without the initiative. And if you have the initiative, well, guess what? You're getting a 1-2, which might hit in for a damage and make your like 2-3 or a 3-3 three, three into a 4-4, four, four, which can be somewhat relevant, just not super powerful. Colonel Yularen, on the other hand, is my pick for one of the strongest uh, green cards, although um, there are a lot of options. Uh, this one's more specifically oriented towards mid-range and uh, controlling decks, but it's one of the ways that you can actually survive into the late game, because it's a 2-3, which is totally fine, and it acts as if it has like Restore 1 slash Restore 2, um, because you can play multiple spells in a turn and get a lot of value out of it. Frontline Shuttle, this one's a very unique one, arguably one of the most unique units in the whole game, giving your units the ability to attack while exhausted. The tricky part is you're paying two resource for a 1-3 that could potentially just die, and the action requires you to defeat the Frontline Shuttle, so you're essentially paying a two resource for you to go ahead and just give yourself a keep fighting. <laughs> mm. 
that's about it now you don't have to tap it as you can see right here um if you look at like alliance dispatcher you could just activate this immediately when it comes down so it is kind of like a keep fighting I just don't find this to be very very impressive because it's only a keep fighting for ambushing purposes you can't hit bases if it hit, ba if it hit it bases uh or if it was able to hit bases it's something a lot more interesting I would say next up we have patrolling v-wing this is a card that I'm not a huge fan of again the body is just way too small and giving you the card back if this was magic putting this in every one of my decks the problem is people can just hit it and kill it and then you've wasted two resource it, for the most part on the other hand consortium star viper is a very strong three drop a three three in space is very oppressive because a lot of the best threats are two threes on defense or one threes on defense when you're considering a lot of options a wings red threes um you know x wings all that type of stuff all two threes one threes or whatever this just kills it and stays around and if you have the initiative it's restored to really really strong homestead sentinel not a huge fan of this one not great tags um and six or more resources to get sentinel is just it's fine it's not terrible it's fine problem is it's a three four with not great um like tags uh so it's not a rebel or anything um uh, so you can't benefit from that and then the more defensive you know villainy cards just have better options oftentimes like emperor's royal guard and cell block guard which just give you sentinel immediately when they come out Escort Skiff, on the other hand, very strong. Again, anything with Ambush is really, really powerful. This one, though, does not have tags that I really like. No Imperial, no Rebel, which is the tag that you're really looking for, or Force. Uh, and this one um, is very, very good in oftentimes sideboard purposes. But if you can get an Ambush with it, yeah, love a card. Love the card. If you can't, it's a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, not that great. Next up, we have Agent Callus. Um, and again, this guy has Ambush which is really, really strong. Um, the problem is it's a 4-4 four, four for 5. And so when you're ambushing this out, it actually just doesn't kill things. And it actually just dies. Uh, so while ambush is great, if this was like a 5-4, like syndicate lackeys, suddenly this card's way better, right? Kills Boba. It kills things like Steadfast Battalion. It kills things like, um, you know, any, any 5 toughness creature royal guard whatever and it just has an extra power which is really really powerful unfortunately the unique unit defeating giving you card draw not really relevant basically ever so just a mediocre ambush card on the other hand steadfast battalion again as i said with the uh, cardinal ularin and the star viper one of the better green cards um non-villainy non-heroism in the game now, it doesn't have a rebel tag. If this had a rebel tag um, or uh, an imperial tag, suddenly, specifically rebel though, suddenly this card would be my pick 100% for the best, um, you know, non heroism, non villainy green card. Just disgusting. But it doesn't. So it's just really good. And the main reason for that is ECL. Okay. If this didn't have ECL with it attached, and you might have seen, I, I play it in my Leia deck. Uh, and it's really good against the aggro decks, but it's really poor against Boba and Control. And so I take it out against Boba and Control, but I keep it in against aggro because if you get to attack with it with a leader unit, it's just gross. If you don't, it's kind of just a dorky five, five resource, five, five that did nothing. Um, and so you really want to ECL it because you can deploy your leader ECL and suddenly you're attacking for seven with Overwhelm and... You may even be able to go ahead and attack for fire, kill something, and give something else plus two plus two to kill something else, which is really powerful. Mercenary Company, Ambush, Overwhelm, 5-5, five, five, very strong. The problem is, is that ECL exists with Steadfast Battalion. Um, and so most people aren't even playing Mercenary Company because they just rather ECL out a Steadfast Battalion rather than just playing a Mercenary Company um, because it comes out a turn sooner, which is extremely relevant since most of the most popular leaders are five costed. Right, so you can ECL out Steadfast Battalion. Um, that doesn't mean Mercenary Company's bad. Uh, it's just that it's kind of just a little bit too overcosted, but still is relevant in some matchups. 97th Legion, one of the strongest, uh, just straight up statted creatures. It's at minimum, you know, seven resource, seven seven at most. It could be, you know, seven resource, 15, 15, 16, 16. I don't know how long some of the games have went, but I've gotten to like 13, 14 resources in some of the matchups um and uh yeah it's a 13 13 it's a 14 14 it is very strong it is very powerful and well 
it's just a fat creature nothing more to say about it it's also an imperial which is pretty cool but and this is the last one um that i think is one of the strongest green cards in reinforcement walker six nine very unassuming for eight mana but the ability to heal three damage every attack every uh when it comes into play and when it attacks is extremely oppressive and if you're in the more controlling matchups you get to draw many people forget about it but you can just draw the cards instead of um you know discarding it and healing because in the control matchups or, or more late game matchups i'd much rather have a couple of additional cards um especially when you get to like the 12 13 resource amount and well if you need the health you need the health and this puts you out of range of the aggro decks when you finish them off or when you start to stabilize you're at like 21 hp uh or you have four hp left and you play a reinforcement walker and they may have like a couple units on the battlefield but they can't get through your sentinel suddenly you're like they're like oh man i have to kill their sentinel i have to get in for the points of damage and i have to do it either before reinforcement walker starts hitting me or i have to just kill the reinforcement walker and they almost never can very strong card as for upgrades i'm a huge i'm very down on academy training and hardpoint heavy blaster academy training is much much better um in my opinion and that's mainly because you don't have a restriction on where you can place it it's a plus two plus two very plain nothing too much to talk about there um it's just upgrades are pretty bad in the meta right now especially against boba specifically um and so that's something you have to think about unless you're playing like a force deck where you can leverage the actual force abilities and try to protect your units well not a huge fan of upgrades and hard point heavy blaster has to be attached to a vehicle unit way too specific you can attach it to space units which can be decent um but it's too inconsistent for me and you get blown out too much by boba but traitorous is one of the few upgrades that i do very much like this is extremely extremely powerful against aggro and more tempo mid-range it's fine against boba surprisingly even though um they can bounce something to their hand because they are a tempo deck right so if you go um turn two super lasers turn two resupply turn two whatever and then turn three you play traitorous on their boba suddenly they either are waylaying that back to their hand or you just get the best three drop in the whole game to start smacking them with guess what that's pretty good <laughs> um traitorous is a very good card and definitely the best upgrade in green and then we lastly have all of the events uh most of these events are pretty bad uh recruit searching for the top five revealing a unit and drawing it um not extremely extremely powerful i don't even like this in more mid-rangey controlling decks because to be honest you draw so many cards every turn you draw two a turn you get to see so much of your deck this is really just not relevant for the most part um tactical advantage giving a unit plus two plus two for this phase i've seen some success for that for, with this but the problem is is that plus two plus two only thing it allows you to do is trade when you have higher toughness um or if you're just trying to trade with a unit that was higher costed and thus you've kind of added plus one cost to your unit it just doesn't really work itself out all that great oftentimes and it's again really bad against boba when they exhaust your units um, or they bounce it it's just really sad prepare for takeoff similar to recruit um but uh, you get to go ahead and search for two and draw them but they have to be vehicle units this one might be better um, as we get more vehicles in the game. Problem is, is that taking a turn off to draw cards in this game is just really bad. Uh, it's just way too slow. Even the controlling decks are going to punish you for that, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, so yeah, just not a huge fan of that. On the other hand, we have resupply. And this is definitely the strongest green event, giving you just a turn two ramp spell. Very, very powerful. And it can go in any color, including, you know, the heroism decks, which doesn't really have many ramp options but resupply one of the few ways you can do it and is really strong for it uh so definitely definitely the ability to give you a free card early on in your leader makes these cards a lot better uh, unlike you know magic or other games if you don't have that like if you didn't have the leader these cards would be so much worse that's the only reason um why a lot of these are so powerful is because you guarantee you get to an additional board state by getting your leader deployed early on with resupply or any of the other ramp spells lastly we have strike true 
it's just a fine removal spell it's just kind of like a bad overwhelming barrage like a really bad overwhelming barrage because it can only hit one unit instead of spreading out your um, power over a lot of different units but it's one of the few ways that green has in terms of removal and so it's a fine card nothing super spectacular just mm, kind of mediocre and that's going to be the overall look on green complete set review um maybe in the future as we get more and more sets i might divide it up um, and talk, start talking about the draft as well as constructed when i talk about all these cards but uh that's the complete green set review let me know what you think about it let me know what your thoughts are are there any standout cards did i miss any you know when i talk about my favorite of each of the different color um combinations you know heroism green uh, villainy green etc 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 is there one that you're like wait why don't you like i don't know uh general krell more or whatnot whatever it is that you that you uh like a little bit more and again let me know if you want to see all the other ones we have aggression we have cunning we have vigilance left over and of course heroism and villainy which uh we could also do on the channel let me know in the comment section down below thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you all for the next one